Hello, my friends. Welcome. Today, I want to talk about solving rational equations. Equations with fractions. Dun -dun -dun. So get yourself uh, some paper and some pencil because we're going to be doing some thinking. And thinking should always be accompanied by writing. They are the twin sisters that go together that make your mind strong. So let's do a bit of review here. If I were to be adding or subtracting rational expressions, I would have to get a common denominator. But if I'm solving um, equations, rational equations, I don't have to, and here's why. There's a difference between an expression and an equation. Let me tell you what I mean. An expression, for an expression, the value has to remain the same. So if I had something like, oh, x over three, plus, oh, I don't know, one over four, I would have to get a common denominator in order to add those things. What's the common denominator? Well, let's see, the common denominator would be uh, 12 between those. So the common denominator 12 all over a single fraction. I got to multiply the left-hand side fraction by four on the bottom to get a common denominator of 12. So I have to multiply the top by four because um, I'm really only allowed to multiply by one and four fourths is one. So on the top side, it would be four X over here. This one on the right hand side, the denominator needs a factor of three. So I'm gonna multiply this top by three because three over three is one. So put four X plus three all over 12 and whatever that is, woohoo, I'm done. But an equation is something else. For an equation, the values can change provided that the two sides of the equation stay equal to each other. So what if I had something like this? What if I had, let's even just use the same things. What if I had x over three plus one over four, and now I'm gonna add the special thing, equals, I'll just do something easy, one over 12. Now that I've got an equation, I can use the equation principle, which is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the entire other side, right? Why dot see what I'm toss? So instead of getting a common denominator, what I'm allowed to do now is multiply through by a common denominator. And you can still do it by getting a denominator, So, but, but that's really, that's too slow. It's not very efficient. So what's the least common denominator? Well, the least common denominator would be 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna multiply the entire left-hand side by 12, and I'm gonna multiply the entire right-hand side also by 12. And what that does is it cancels all the denominators. Hey, if you don't like fractions, me neither. If you've got an equation that involves fractions, if you multiply through by the least common denominator, it will eliminate, it'll cancel all your fractions. You can be a fraction killer. Kill those fractions. Let's just work with integers. So let me distribute this now and you'll see what I'm saying. So I'm gonna distribute the 12 bit and I'm gonna do it really slow, maybe a little too slow for some of you, but you need to see the steps here so that your mind understands. And then when we do it with larger ones, you won't be too far behind. So this becomes 12 times X over three plus 12 times one over four. I didn't multiply those in, right? I'm just, I'm just distributing the 12. And then there's equal to, and then this is going to be 12 times 1 12th. And now what goes on is I get cancellations. The, on the left-hand side, the 12, this, remember this is 12 over 1. The 12 and the 3 are going to cancel, leaving me a 1 down there and a 4. So what's my first term? It's just 4 times the x that's there. 4x. The denominator is 1. I don't have to write it. Now, on the next one, the 12 and the 4 are going to cancel, because that's 12 over 1 again, leaving me a 1 and a 3. So with three times the one that's there, so plus three is then equal to the 12 and the 12s cancel, leaving me just a one. Now, isn't that nice? Look at that. 4x plus three is equal to one, and you can go and solve it from there. So the goal when we do this is to multiply through by the least common denominator and then solve. 
but we got to pay attention to what our answer is in the end because remember that when you have fractions the denominator cannot be equal to zero so let's take a look at this example here a couple things we got to notice right away okay i see lots of fractions um, here's the thing that's most important first of all it's an equation so i have a left hand side over here and i have a right hand side over here so i'm allowed to use the equation rule if there's no equal sign, you can't multiply both sides of the equation by something because there is no both sides. You don't have two sides. You, don't have, any, you have an, don't have an equal sign. You just have one. But in this case, I do. So let me look through here at the denominators. I got an X and then I got a 4 and a 2. What's the least common denominator? It would be 8X. So my strategy then is to multiply everything through by 8X. And so I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by 8x over 1, right? And then I'm going to multiply the right-hand side by 8x. And um, I'll go ahead and write that over 1 just for simplicity's sake. All right. Now, I'm going to do the same thing I did before, and that is I'm not going to multiply 8 in. I'm just going to set it up. So this now becomes 8x times the first element, and I'll keep it with my... Uh, black ink there 12 over X and then it was plus and then again 8x times the second element which was 3 fourths and then that equals um, a 3 halves oh rats it equals a 3 halves trying to get the color coding thing here times 8x over 1 and so then I've got a 3 halves in there there we go now it's set up for me to do some cancellations and this is really helpful to do on lined notebook paper I realize here on the screen I don't have lines I really wish um, I would if I would have a line then I would use um, the line on the paper to show me where my numerator and denominator were and notice that my numerators are all above the line and my denominators are all below the line it's important that you see that line paper is very helpful okay so now let me go through and do my cancellations here and i'll try to do those here let's do it in purple all right so on the left hand side um, i have an x on the bottom and an x on top that cancels what i'm left with then is just the 8 then times the 12. 8 times 12, 96. Plus, what cancels on the next one? Well, the 4 completely drops out with the 8, leaving me a 2 on top and a 1 on the bottom. So then it's a 2x times the 3 that's there. 6x equals now the 2 cancels with the 8 on top, leaving me a 4. A 3 times 4x there, 12x. Now look! <laughs> No fractions. Well, we do have fractions. Okay, all right. So the denominator is one, but that doesn't cause you any stomach aches, does it? It's good. Now, this one's very easy to now solve. Minus 6x from both sides. I'm going to subtract 6x. This cancels. 96 is equal to 6x. And then I need to divide the right-hand side by 6 and divide the left-hand side by 6. And this cancels. And so I get x is equal to... Um, let me use some short division here. I don't know if you've ever seen this before. I didn't learn this till a couple of years ago. How many times does 6 go into 9 without going over? Once. And how many are left over? A 3. So there's a 3, 6 right there. How many times is 6 into 36? Uh, 6 times. There we go. But wait! Remember, we're solving um, an equation that had a fraction originally, and denominators are not allowed to be 0. If I plug 16 in for x, does it make my denominator zero? Go back up to the original problem. Well, my only denominator that was a variable was x. And since it didn't make that denominator zero, right, that x can't be zero. Um, that was not allowed. 16 is. So good. I've got an answer. If for some reason I had gotten an answer and, and I did the algebra and it was x is equal to zero and I go back up to the top and realize, oh, I'm not allowed to have that then my final answer is no solution because you're not allowed to make your denominator zero. All right. So the strategy then is to multiply through by the least common denominator. All right. So let's do um, example number two. All right. So here's a group. I see an equal sign again. There we go. But um, I'm noticing something that I've got both 
I've got just one fraction on the left and one fraction on the right. This is called a proportion. Now, the least common denominator is going to be both of those factors. It's going to be w minus 2 times w plus 3. And I can multiply everything through by the least common denominator, and, and that would work itself out. But let me show you a little um, simpler way to do it. When you've got a proportion, one of the properties of a proportion is the cross products have to be equal to each other. And you know this, but let me point this out again. So if I said something like 1 over 4 is equal to something, I don't know, over um, 20, wouldn't you say this has to be 5 right here, right, in order for there to be equal? But look at this. Um, if I take the diagonals and multiply them together, 4 times 5, what's that? 20. And if I take this one, 1 times 20, what's that? 20. Those have to be equal to each other. So 4 times 5 has to be equal to 1 times 20. That's uh, what you might have called cross multiplication. I really don't like that phrase too much. It really is setting the cross products equal to each other. And so that's the way I would solve this one here. Remember that your denominators are groups. And so what I would do is I would do four times this, and I would just write it out four times w plus three, the diagonal, has to be equal to negative one times the other one, w minus two. And now I just distribute and solve it as normal. So I would distribute the 4 in, 4w plus 12 is equal to negative w uh, plus 2. And then if I come in here and I add w and add w and then do a um, minus 12 here and a minus 12 here, this is going to cancel. That's going to cancel. I'm going to get a 5w is equal to negative 10 divided by 5 divided by 5. w is equal to negative 2. Or is it? Does negative 2 make any one of my original denominators 0? Well, my first denominator was w minus 2, and that can't be 0, so that means w can't be positive 2. Is negative 2 a problem? No. And then the other denominator was w plus 3. That can't be 0, so that means w can't be negative 3. So here's my two problem values, 2 and negative 3. Negative 2 is not one of those, so I'm good for that one. All right, so when you're solving proportions, uh, set the cross products equal and then solve. But you always got to check your denominators and make sure that um, it doesn't, your final answer doesn't make one of the denominators 0. All right, now let's do a challenging one. Oh my goodness, doesn't that just give you a headache <laughs> looking at it? It's okay. If you, if you get a brain cramp while you're doing this work, go ahead and press pause on the video and then walk it off. Right, You'll be all right. Okay, the first thing I need to do is I need to factor all my denominators. So I'm going to give myself some room to work here. This is going to be C plus 1 over C minus 3. Okay, that's fine. Here's my equal sign right there, so equals. And then I'm going to say 4 over 1. And then it's going to be minus 12 divided by, if I factor that denominator, factors of 3 that when I subtract them give me 2, that would be C minus 3 and C plus 1. So what is now the least common denominator? Least common denominator is going to be every single factor. Here, let me put parentheses around that. So my least common denominator then is going to be C minus 3 times C plus 1. So that's what I multiply everything by. So I'm going to take the left-hand side, and I'm going to multiply it by C minus 3 times C plus 1. And then I'm going to take this entire right-hand side, and multiply it by c minus 3 times c plus 1. And I'm going to now cancel these pieces. Now, it, on the left, there's only one piece. And so maybe you can see right away that on the left, this c minus 3 is going to cancel with that c minus 3. And I get a c plus 1 times a c plus 1 remaining. So that's going to be a c plus 1 squared. Okay. Now, uh, the next step is going to be 4 times both of these, and nothing cancels because that denominator is just 1. So that's going to be 4 times c minus 3 times c plus 1. The best thing to do is not do the math like in between, but just to cancel and set everything up and then multiply through. 
<coughs> excuse me. Now, as I take this group and multiply it into this next term, all of these are going to cancel. So my right-hand side term is just going to be minus 12, right? Do you see that? This C minus 3 is going to cancel with that C minus 3, and this C plus 1 is going to cancel with this C plus 1. And it'll sort itself out like that. All right, so now the fractions are gone. Let me then expand everything, collect like terms, and then solve the quadratic. This is going to be C squared plus... What? What'd you get? Come on, tell me. 2C plus 1. If you said just C squared plus 1, <laughs> stop it. You don't just square the pieces. You got to multiply it out. Um, and then this is equal to now 4 times. I can simplify this. This is C squared minus 2C minus 3 and then minus 12. And let me just keep going. All right, I'll copy down a little bit. C squared plus 2C plus 1 is equal to 4C squared minus 8C minus 12 minus another 12. Okay, C squared plus 2C plus 1 is equal to 4C squared minus 8C minus 24. All right, so I've simplified the left and I've simplified the right. It's quadratic, and so the way that we solve quadratics is we get uh, the right-hand side or the left-hand side equal to 0. I'll make the left-hand side equal to 0 because that leaves me... Uh, positive c squareds. So I will come in here and minus c squared on the left and minus c squared on the right and then minus 2c on the left and then minus 2c on the right and then minus 1 on the left and minus 1 on the right. All of these cancel giving me a 0 on the left hand side. Right side, uh, 3c squared minus 10c minus 25. Okay, it's really getting long. Uh, we're moving along here. Do you remember how to solve quadratics? You could use the quadratic formula, or you can factor, or you can complete the square. Um, I would probably see if it would factor first. Quadratic formula, though, would always work. But does it factor? Well, my a value is 3. I need to use the AC method of factoring. Do you remember that one? Take the 3 times the 25, that's 75, and now let me list all the factors of 75. 1 and 75, 3 and 25, 5 and um, 15. But I'm looking for ones that when I subtract them, give me the number 10. And so it's going to be that pair right there. If you need f factoring um, tutorials, if you forgot how to factor by grouping or you've um, the AC method or you've never learned it, please go back and look at my video on factoring using the AC method. So I'm going to split this middle term out now into a positive 5C and then a minus 15C. That's how I would get a negative 10C. And then I keep the same stuff I've had before. 0 is equal to 3C squared and then over here is minus 25. And then I just split it right down the middle. Do -do 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 and 0 is equal to, what can I factor out of these two terms? I can factor a C out. What does that leave me? It leaves me a C plus 5. Now, on the right-hand side, out of those terms right there, can I factor something out that gives me a C plus 5? Well, I guess um, a negative 3. And just double-check. If I take a negative 3 times a positive 5, oops, nope, I repent. A negative 3. 15? Am I doing some? I'm, I'm feeling a mistake here. Ah, I, I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Hopefully you found it and you were yelling at me. It ain't that. That's why we show the work. Hey, look, uh, I make mistakes um, here and there. If I've got a record of my work, it's my job to go back through the mistake and find where I made it and rethink the, the path and correct the path. And if I was just doing it in my head, there would be no record of it and I would uh, have to give up and start over again and I'd probably make the same mistake a second time. Um, and I would come to false conclusions like I'm dumb or I'm stupid or I'm no good at math, none of which is true. 
Um, mathematics, one of the chief benefits of mathematics is that its truth is demonstrable. You can demonstrate the truth of math. And so when you keep a record of your work, not only are you learning, like we said at the beginning of the video, it also gives you a chance to go back and find and correct your mistakes. All right, so if I factored a C out of that first term, what have I got left? I'll even change colors to highlight. I'm going to have a 3C plus 5. And then I have to get a 3C plus 5 here. Now, what can I factor out of those second two terms from a 15C to give me a 3C? There we go. There's a negative 5. Okay. <laughs> Man, I feel better now. Okay. Um, so if I multiply now negative 5 into positive 5, do I get a, a negative 25? Yes, I do. And so do you see how my thought process there of double checking that last bit like caught the mistake? Don't be afraid to make a mistake. Okay, work through it to fix it. That shows strength. All right, so now let's see if we can finish this. This video is getting a little long. Zero is equal to 3c plus 5 times what's left after I factor that out. A c minus 5. And if I have two or more factors that multiply and the product is zero, then one or more of the factors must be equal to zero. So stop. Now, two new equations, 3c plus 5 is equal to 0. So c then is equal to negative 5 thirds. <laughs> Man, did a whole lot of work for that one. And then c minus 5 is equal to 0. So c is equal to 5. Oh my goodness, I got two solutions. But wait, do I? I almost forgot. Like I had to go way back to the very, very beginning. Which, which factors are not allowed? If I go back up into here um, and say my denominator right there is C minus 3, that means C cannot be equal to positive 3. That's the domain restriction. Did I get a positive 3? Oh, no. Okay, so I don't have any problem there. But this one here was a, if you remember, it was a C minus 3 and a C plus 1. If I take C plus 1 and set it equal to 0 and say I can't have it, that means I can't also have a negative one. Did I get a C is equal to negative one for my answers? I either one? No, no. Okay, good. So both of these answers then work. Nice. Okay, that's it for now. When you solve uh, rational equations, multiply through by the least common denominator, which is going to test your factoring skills. It's going to test your um, simplification skills. And if you show your work, um, Hopefully, like me, if you make a mistake, you'll be able to find it and then fix it. All right. So keep pursuing the good and the true and the beautiful. Have a great day.